in the habit of starting uh, a backpack video in my house where I'm staying, but uh, I mean, this is just, just part of my day, man. This is just part of backpacking. So my plans got pushed. You know, I was only working until a certain time tomorrow, and now, and then I got pushed a few hours, so now it's noon. I have a five hour drive to make, and then I have a backpack to make. Oh my. So day one is crazy, and I'm pushing things. But it's been so long since I've been in a backpack. I mean, all of May went by, and life happened, bad weather happened, work happened. It's just. So I'm eager to get out there. I don't care what's going on. I'll make it work. Uh, I do have several options on the backpack. I can stop at like four kilometers. I can stop at seven and a half kilometers. There are campgrounds there. Or I can walk 12 kilometers what I had originally planned. So anyway, uh, enough, uh, enough me making an intro to a video. I've got to get in my car. I've got to grab some food for the road. Uh, I'm even gonna, yeah. Let's roll. All right, things are going pretty well. Uh, so far, at least. I got out of the city like probably 10 after 12, roughly. I got food. Things have to go well today. I mean, I just can't, you know, I'm driving to Cadman, from Calgary to Cadman. Now, the roads I'm taking up there, I don't even know how good they are, how decent they are. Uh, I know some of them are gravel so this drive has to go smooth or has to go pretty decently and it can't be a disaster and then uh, and then I'll feel that decent I mean this this whole backpack every single day I've taken some chances there's yeah there's a lot of question as to whether or not I can do this backpack I'm going from Cataman to Miet Hot Springs through uh, Whitehorse Wilderness and uh, up into Jasper National Park. So, yeah, every day. Every day there is something that might turn me back. And today is no exception. Today is just trying to get to the backpack, trying to get to the trailhead, and, uh, you know, ready to rock, ready to backpack, right? All right. Well, I've been driving about two hours. Uh, I am almost to a town called Rocky Mountain House. I have to proceed over to Nordegg and then the fun begins uh, it sounds like it looks as though it's pretty much gravel for god 125 kilometers I'm in the worst car of all time for uh, any sort of off-roading that kind of thing it's never really stopped me before well that's that's not true it has stopped me before but uh, I have driven gravel in the past for 100 kilometer, that sort of thing. So we'll see how it goes. But the plain truth is, I don't know what this road is like. So hell, I'm taking, there are risks that my backpack could be stalled and I haven't even made it to the trailhead yet. So we'll see what happens. It's been some nice country though, gotta say. 143 kilometers left to Cataman. The moment I get off, David Thompson Highway. Gravel. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, I can't get that thing to take a real straight shot of the road, but that's basically what I'm dealing with. It's uh, up, it's down, it's left, it's right. And I've been driving for five minutes, mostly keeping uh, 70 to 80 kilometers an hour. So that ain't not bad, but uh, yeah, this is going to be probably two hours, and uh, if I make it through at all, I mean, who says it's going to stay like this the whole way, right? And uh, yeah, it could be interesting. Well, 
I'm pretty confident I'm gonna make through. I'm 35 kilometers down this road now, and I've met about six vehicles coming back the other direction, all trucks, of course, but he's gonna believe that they're probably coming from Cataman. I find this random pullout, those even garbages. And uh, I don't know. Is there a place to go see a viewpoint of some kind? There is a viewpoint, but I think I gotta stand on something in order to see it. Alright, use this garbage for something. Oh my god, how do I stand on this thing? Ugh. That was totally graceful, I promise. Alright, yeah, you can see down there a little bit. Some interesting stuff down here. Couldn't believe it. I saw a sign saying, uh, you know, uh, don't pass the school bus. And then there was like a road. It's like, oh my God, someone lives out here. Amazing. All right, well, cool, moving on. Well, I thought this was just a, just a logging oil road, but there is stuff down here. So I don't know if I decide to come back this way, I might actually stop and I mean, the creek is actually looks kind of cool. I might go walk around it for a while. And what else am I coming down this thing? Anyway, kind of neat. It's just some nice country I'm going through. I'm about halfway. I left Clearwater County and entered Yellowhead County and right away the road got more potholes, <laughs> like immediately. More potholes. Oh well, it's still I can still deal with it, so I'll just deal. Want to see where your paper and all that comes from? Here you go. And there's one impressive pile of lumber. All right. So I. Uh, you know, I came to uh, a T in the road, and the road got better, and that's awesome. And this is the Pemina River. So, I had some bad luck, the road got worse, and now I've got some good luck, and the road is better. And yet another little provincial wreck area that I can come play in if I want to when I come back. Go check out. All right, things are looking up. Yay, 50 kilometers to go. And another recreation area, number five. Oh, this makes me happy. I hope this lasts. I think there is still more, but this makes me happy. Uh, I thought so. It only lasted 18 kilometers. Oh well. <laughs> This road is worse than anything else I've seen. Can't believe this. I thought I was done, or at least I wouldn't see anything worse. Ugh. Oh my God. All right, that last bit, that was the best being safe for last. That was nuts. It was fine, it wasn't. It was worse than all the rest of it, but then I got to a flat part and was like, okay, I'm good. Like 10 kilometers to Cataman, I'm good. The, there was a big washout on the road and I'm just staring at it going, ugh, I don't know, I don't know about this. Uh, finally, I just took a run at it, you know, enough force to not damage my car, but enough to carry it through and I made it. And I was genuinely afraid that I was about to get my car stuck or damaged. And, oh my God, that was the only time, 10 kilometers from Cataman. So, you know, like I, what was I gonna do? It had been a hundred kilometers to go around, at least. Oh, five and a half hours. That's what it took me to get here. Yay. Look at this car. 
this car that wants to center high center itself so bad and pick up any damn thing any rock call it uh, bravery stupidity good driving or just dumb luck but I did it I drove 128 kilometers on gravel and went went through a washout with this thing and it, it's just I don't know how many times this thing took a mouthful of gravel I tried not to but oh and now it's almost six o'clock oh my god well I'm almost ready to rock after all that all that it is now starting to rain if I was here at 10 in the morning, I could sit here for a bit, uh, wait for the shower to pass, hope it passes. But I did not come all that way and go through all that to sit in my car and pick my nose. I am getting out there. I don't have the time for one thing. I'm getting out there. I got, I'm going to go at least that seven and a half kilometers to that one spot. And then I'll make a game time decision at that point. All right, nothing to do but get out in it. All right, whatever the cost... Whatever the condition, I am out on my first backpack of the year, damn it. New backpack, new tent. Yeah, I'm pumped. Horses come back here. Harlequin. Oh no, sawmill, sorry. Maybe this guy. I'm doubting it more and more. 100 meters away from the trailhead. Not bad, it's a pretty cool creek. Beautiful country in here. I don't have much time, but I still gotta enjoy myself. Otherwise, what's the point, right? Getting rain on pretty good, and it doesn't look like it's gonna stop anytime soon. It's beautiful so far. It follows this creek. I've done this part before. My first year of uh, hiking that I just made a montage video for, you know. I did all that hiking before I was ever on YouTube. Came out here with my sister and her family. It was fun. The only part of that that made it into that montage was the very end where I was raising my hands in triumph. Oh, I had someone else there to actually take a picture of me for a change, so. Yeah. Ugh. The rain has slowed down a little. That's nice. What do we got here? Leyland Basin. So. I don't think that's where we went last year. Anyway, or two years ago. Anyway, I'm going to go this way. So that doesn't really matter. Not yet. So like usual on a bat, uh, near a trailhead, there's a, a variety of trails, but this one is actually pretty well signed, right? So we're here, we just passed Leyland Basin and Lower White Horse is the hiker trail and Upper White Horse is the horse trail. So it's all right, it's not confusing. That uh, Drummond Trail, I didn't see on any of the maps. Mind you, there's not really a gem trek map or anything for this anyhow, so. Lower White Horse Creek Trail, 4.2 kilometers. All right, off into the great unknown. This is now officially stuff I haven't seen yet, which is always just awesome. I had to come off Creek to Trail to see this a bit. This is wicked. You can hear it. You can see up here too, it's not bad at all. You can't see the rain that way. I sure see it coming that way because it's raining on me still. The rain has stopped, the sun came out. Oh, oh, oh. Fantastic. I love it. I haven't seen this Drummond Creek Trail, but I have to think that that's it down there, that it follows that. Hmm. 
Well, a power into a uh, in the back, this first backpack, my Osprey has already been christened. Already got my, uh, oh, already got my rain gear off. I think it's just as important to take your rain gear off as soon as it stops raining as it is to put it on because otherwise, sweat into the shirt. Now the shirt's wet. So you get wet, right? You don't want that. I want this shirt for the next four days, thank you. Well, there we go. I know nothing about that trail. It must be new. I, I didn't see it on the White Horse Wildland. Uh, oh, see, so you can see horses and humans down there. You can see it with the signs. It wasn't on the uh, website, and I, I haven't really found any literature, at least not very much of it. Like, no YouTube videos or anything of this area, so. Anyway, there it is. Doing a bit of climbing. I have a funny feeling there's a payoff down here, like uh, a waterfall or something, but can't hear anything yet. Ah, oh, it's well learned. The more you preach, the more you, the harder you work to get it, the more you appreciate this. This is so cool. And look at that postcard up there. Jeez. Ah. Oh. Beautiful. The next several kilometers of trail, ladies and gentlemen. I've only walked another 30 feet. Look at this. Oh. Hasn't even been an hour yet. I'm already so happy I came out here. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. I'm so happy to be in a backpack. Oh my God. Oh. When you're through hiking something, turn around, look back. Because you could, if you don't, you could be missing some pretty cool shots. At least the intention is to through hike. We'll see what happens. Many obstacles to be taken care of. Oh, I don't know why, but there is clearly a waterfall down there. There's a tree down there that's been marked. And I don't see any trail at all. Why not? Why not? All right, I guess I'm making a side trip. <laughs> I don't have time for this, but I'm doing it anyways. Okay, so it's not massive, but it's cool. Let me go down there and take a little break by it. is up here just underneath these trees. Well that's pretty cool. But I gotta carry on. I'm not making very good very good time. It looks as though all I've done is two and a half kilometers. And it's been like I don't know a bit more than an hour. That's not very good. So, I don't think I'll be going to that 12 kilometer campground. We'll see. But probably stopping at seven and a half. Yeah, well. I love you horse guys because you keep trails clear. You bring out the chainsaws, you clear them. But kind of sucks when this happens to the trail. Ugh, it's all chewed up. Coming to the conclusion that this is kind of a rough trail. 
Uh, the horse part at least was uh, pretty flat, so I rattled off some few hundred good quick meters, but yeah, a lot of it's up and down, and I think I'm in for it. Like I didn't, it's not a mountain load of kilometers on this trail, on this through hike, but I know that it's not well tended and it's rough and there's rock slides. There's also two passes and four crossings. So yeah, I did not give myself a softball first hike of the year, first back. This is nice, just sort of hiking alongside this guy right now. Just fairly flat. I'll take it, absolutely. There's the way back. That's where I came from. So much for the flat stuff. River's down there, sorry to lose it. This actually looks flat now after I climb up onto this ridge. Well, it has been nice forest walk. A little bit of uh, beat up horse stuff, but you can see that someone's had a lot of work in here, so I got no complaints. About another half kilometer to the first campground, which is called Trappers. One, two, three, four. It's enjoying themselves. So you have a green throne and you got pretty nice metal uh, metal bear hang over here, not bad. There's no picnic tables though. Oh, those are so nice to take a break at. It's pretty sick. Oh, wicked view, really nice. Look what you see from this end. Holy crap, that I take the hard way. This is way better. All right. There was uh, five people staying there. It seemed nice. They're just staying for a few days. So if I fail to get through this pass, I'm going to go back. I'll have some company at least. Jeez. 30 seconds out of this campground. Awesome. This is what I get to hike with for the next little bit. And also, now that this is a combined horse, horse trail, this is just way, way easier. Well, I have a bit of a rock hop and actually looks like, I actually bit of a, a bit of a fort over there. Just, eh, that'll be a rock hop. But uh, look at this. Um, this would be a crazy, a cool scramble out of that campground, I gotta say. Yeah, just hike it on the campground and then day hike that thing. That would be fun. Well, I didn't get my feet wet there, but the only reason is because these scarpas are like 350 bucks and they are like waterproof or excellent quality. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's, I think that gives me a sense of what my crossings are going to be. They're going to be tough, man. I got four crossings, six if I decide to try and uh, go to Fiddle, uh, Fiddle Warden Cabin because you got to cross the river for that. But uh, I don't even know if it's there anymore, but maybe you need to go check it out. But not, if, uh, not at the risk of my life or... If it's too much of a pain in the butt, that'll definitely be a game time decision. So anyway, okay, this is actually starting to get a little confusing now. It looks like a trail there. So imagine it goes up there. There also could be a trail over there, but like in order to get over there, I have to cross this again. Like I just crossed over there. Is this new? Ugh.
All right, then. Look for a good spot and cross. Oh, there's a little thing of uh, orange tape over there. It's good to see. Made it across again. Again, thanks to the boots, my feet are still dry. Trail comes here, and then you got tape over there. So, I mean, it could very easily be up that way. But this tape, oh yeah, here we go. There's the stuff. And some footprints. Okay, thank you very much. It's exactly the kind of thing I needed. All right, I think I'm on the trail. Well, okay. How far past that? There's another campsite here. With a leftover glove. Cool. Nice hiking right now, man. Really nice. That is so cool. What a wicked shot to hike up to. Wicked shot to hike up to, man. Man. Well, it followed the creek for a while. Nice and straight. Not that, uh, not really any elevation. And now it's kind of gone into this meadowy type area. Same deal. Boy, I took the hard way by taking that lower hiker trail. It looks like uh, that upper horse trail was much easier, but uh, I'm glad I took it. I mean, my plan is only to hike it once, so I want to see the good stuff. But uh, yeah, <laughs> if you want to get to that first campsite easy, just take the upper, take the upper one. You won't see as much, but you're, I'll have a lot less trouble. The legs will be a lot less tired. Okay, so I came off this trail. Now it's joining up with another big horse trail. Maybe that's the one that came that was going up out of there? I don't know. It's confusing. Maybe I should have climbed up and checked it out. And again, this trail looks like it gets a lot easier. <laughs> Jeez. I guess, I don't know. Oh yeah, this is, holy crap, look at this. This is a road. <laughs> holy crap. Man, I guess stay high. That's the motto on this trail. If you wanna be, you wanna have an easier time. Well, I got her. I got her in less than an hour. Whitehorse Creek Falls, 6.7 kilometers. Not according to my intel. That's a little troubling. Hmm. Well, let's go check out uh, the sawmill campsite. Okay, not sure. Uh, yeah, whatever. This uh, tape covered stick, I'm not sure what that's for. This is clearly like a cooking bench. Got ourselves a nice little kettle here. Ooh, and a big pipe. Ooh, and a frying pan. Ugh. Sort of. All right, well, I'll continue this tour once I get my pack off, but it's just all on my back. Once upon a time, an old bridge? I don't know. This is called Sawmill, so, and you know, some, uh, some horsemen have uh, cut up a few things. 
cut this tree down entirely. I'm not sure if that's cool or not, but whatever. Oh. Bearing, washrooms. This is clearly for a lean-to, and I'm pretty sure I can see a shoe in here. Yeah, and one shoe. And a lot of, <laughs> this is where they shovel all the, uh, the horse crap, because there's a lot of it. Woo, a little bit of rope. Oh, and a bunch of, uh, look at all the pieces there. Probably hiding in here just so, you know, they can use them, but no one, I don't want anyone to burn them up. Nice open, open view. I don't think I'm going any farther today. Got our river down there. That's definitely the water source in my book. Um... Down there, it looks like the leftovers of a barrel. <laughs> I don't want to wander too far away. My back pack is probably about 50 meters over there now and has food. So, yeah, I don't want to wander too far off. Woo -woo! Woo -woo! All right, until I've got it secured up in a bear hang. Well, not the whole thing, but the food, anyhow. A lot of open space. I mean, this is what uh, perfect for horses, right? And there's kind of a horse path over there, kind of keeping going, even though it's not supposed to. It's not supposed to keep going and head off to, uh, you know, you're supposed to have to backtrack and then go according to the map, but, you know, maybe there is a trail that goes and hooks up with the other, the other trail. Hmm. Not only is there a throne, but someone left Little wipes here. How nice. Cool. And then there's a first class bear hang. Like first class. I have my own uh, cord. I could have just dealt with, uh, you know, a log between two trees because that's pretty normal. But uh, these are both, yeah, this one and the other one at that other site were both great. Got, uh, Discarded pieces. Oh, they're heavy. Can't even budge them. Oh, they're supposed to go in between. Well, why are they over here? It's weird. So I tend to rely on my apps a little too much sometimes. And uh, the first campground, like it actually shows the campgrounds on the app. And it's generally, I believe, the same maps that. Like if I check View Ranger, it has this camp, it has everything exactly the same. So I think all the apps that use maps use the same ones. Um, that first campground was about half a kilometer uh, closer, you know, away from where it mentioned. And this one is about 1.4 kilometers before it shows on the app. Now, as the crow flies, uh, White Horse Creek is four and a half kilometers from here, which is actually what I read. So I'm wondering if tomorrow I should day hike it or if I should just leave it and just try the pass and give up on that little day hike. I mean, I don't know if I'm ever coming back, back down here. Maybe not. There's just so much stuff to hike, but I don't know. Anyway, I guess I'll make that decision tomorrow. I'm uh, staying here tonight, that's definitely for sure. I mean, I woke up at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, I was in Victoria for work on Vancouver Island. I flew back to Calgary, got home, drove five and a half hours to Cataman, and now I've backpacked seven and a half kilometers in, so. That is a full day. Well, I got a bunch of fancy new equipment on this hike. Brand new Zenith 105 backpack. 
Yeah, I know, ultralight, so on, so on, so on. I love having a big pack. I like having all the room I want. So it's an extra pound or two for the backpack because it's big, big deal. Volt 2 tent. My old tent was seven pounds. It's just massive. You know, this old turn three, it's a front country tent. This thing is like two. Yeah, it's awesome. Cuts down my weight somewhat. Uh, I got Crocs. Nothing better than taking your Crocs off. Oh my God, your big hiking boots off. And walk around in Crocs for a while. And later I'll go down and dip them into the river before I go to bed. Uh, I'm also trying darn tough socks. It's my first day with them. Uh, I think they perform pretty well. I do wear sock liners. Right. Sock liners and pretty decent socks and these boots and I don't get blisters. Mind you, I also tend to dip my feet in the water every night. So that might have something to do with it. So yeah, it's uh, this is a shakedown hike as well as uh, my, you know, first hike of the year and all that. So it took a little while to set that up. That's only the second time I've done it. I did it inside the house once. And uh, yeah, spoke a little too soon about these. You know, this is metal. It feels like it's in the ground really good and it's gonna stand a long time. But uh, these are weird contraptions, man. So this is covered in some kind of weird plastic. The plastic is coming off and as you roll it through that wheel out there, it's getting chipped off slowly and it's like, why this plastic? Um, and then I couldn't figure out how to stop my bag from coming back down. Like there's this thing here. and I mean, this one is just busted, right? And you know, there's this, so you kind of grab that and you throw it in there, I suppose, but that doesn't stop the actual wheel from turning. At least I couldn't figure it out. So I got my own little carabiner and I just threw it on like that. And now my bag is up there. Someone's got rope on here. I think that's how they did it. They just tied it up with rope. So the trail that I saw earlier that I thought might connect up with the main trail is the trail down to the river. So you bring your horses down and there you go. bad over there. Hmm. You know, as incorrect as my app has been, my maps.me app, the maps, it does show a trail going down here. As to what? I don't have a clue. Because you can see there is a trail on the other side of that, of the river. This is a place across this river, this creek. It's not a hard rock hop. Anyway, another trail, another mystery for another day or not. Oh my God, the surprises. All right, so I'm down here by the river and I find, I start finding stuff like left, right and center. This is definitely party time here. Wow. Man, you guys, you're on horses. It's a lot of beer cans. Ah, jeez. Not bad. I also saw a stack of wood that I haven't put on camera yet over here which is clearly from the sawmill. So, you know, that's sort of cool. So there was a sawmill and this is definitely evidence, right? Is this an old structure? Look at the size of this. I think this is an old structure. So they had the sawmill right on the river. Ugh. Oh 
Oh yeah, this seems like, this is definitely an old building. I think so. Look at all the sawdust. Sawmills, they do leave sawdust there forever. So here's the one I saw before. I hadn't seen the other side yet. Cool. So I'm back over here. There's where they drank. And uh, it is not hard to figure out what this was. Yeah. Brody. I saw something over here too. So this could have been, this is more evidence of sawmill, right? This stuff doesn't uh, really recover that well. I know this from a sawmill that was in uh, Whistler. Oh. <laughs> ah. I love it. Really cool. <laughs> That's really neat. That's ingenious, honestly. That's really neat. Uh, what the hell do you drink around here? You're gonna have to yell. It's loud. The creek. Oh my God. What else am I gonna find? Pretty sure that's more piles of sawdust. Like they will stay around for decades. And here's that barrel I saw earlier. Just a random barrel. <sighs> kind of buried. I don't think I'm gonna find too much more, but uh, well, I just came down to the river to soak my feet. Cause I kind of figured that trail went down to the river. Oh, I see some more metal over here. But uh, yeah, I <laughs> found some cool stuff. Love it. See, I don't have any write-ups or anything on this. So, you know, it says sawmill. Well, I assume it was an old sawmill, but yeah, that's all I got. Assuming it's an old sawmill. Oh yeah, this is left over from God knows when. Ugh. Cool. I love it. Well, I keep thinking I'm done, and then I find uh, party area number three. This one hasn't been used in a while, though, because there's not a bunch of beer cans. Oh, that's kind of cool. Quite the shade, shade of blue. What a day, holy crap. Wow. Went and dipped my feet in the water. The only thing about doing that is right after, I mean, you gotta do it before on a bed because otherwise your feet never warm up. Like never, they're absolutely frozen. You can only get them in there for like maybe uh, a minute at most. I mean, it's absolutely freezing, freezing cold. So, um, but I never see people do it. I never see someone down by the river dipping their feet in. Uh, I have on YouTube once or twice, but yeah. And it is uh, excellent. It is excellent for your feet. All right, well. Now that I've got him in there, I want to go to bed, which was always the plan. So until I wandered around down there for like half hour. Well, what an insane day. Uh, every day has challenges like this. I mean, tomorrow I might go day hike, uh, White Horse Creek Falls, whatever the hell they're called. But, uh, and then I'm supposed to go through Fiddle Pass. So, and that's going to be a thing. All right. Good night.